invitation and the opportunity to uh, you know, deliver the keynote address for this IGSR sponsored uh, national seminar, national workshop on research methodology and social sciences and research techniques. I'll not take much of your time, as has been pointed out, uh, you are going to start the technical session at the earliest possible. So I'll raise only a couple of questions that you need to uh, you know, think about or you need to deliberate upon when we talk about social science research. I know you'll be talking about the methodology and the techniques, therefore I'm not going to talk on, speak on methodology and the techniques. I'll be telling or I'll be speak on, speaking on something different or something very core to social science research. Uh, what I have framed that constitutional morality in social science research. If you look at national education policy 2020, it has, uh, you know, uh, it has, uh, uh, you know, asserted time and again the whole objective of uh, the uh, national education policy is to take forward, you know, the uh, uh, fundamental values which has been which have been enshrined in our constitution, whether it is liberty, freedom, equality, or social justice. Therefore, when we talk about social science research, we need to keep in mind that constitution, constitutional morality or the foundational values of the constitution are core in social science research. Uh, you know, in 2023, the incumbent civil justice of India, uh, UI Chandrasur, was speaking or was, uh, you know, attending a program in his alma mater, uh, that is, uh, a, you know, Center for Law Profession in Harvard uh, School of Law, where he did his LLM and also PhD in 2023. He was in a conversation. And you know, when he was asked about the overall mission as a justice, and remember that he is one of the longest service uh, longest, uh, you know, serving judges of the country, uh, the incumbent uh, chief justice of India, as well. And he was asked about, you know, what are the uh, important values or what is the very important mission that he has taken forward throughout his career as a judge or as a lawyer, as a practitioner in the courts of, uh, you know, India. And he was uh, pointing out that constitutional morality has been the driving force in his mission as a judge or as a, as a judge or as a practitioner, as a lawyer. And he was talking about the full trajectory of uh, the constitutional morality in the country. He started with the assertion that uh, you know one of the important objectives or one of the important missions for a judge is to think about the rights of the people. And when you think about the rights of the people, many, many things will come up and I'll just, I'll reflect on that. But one of the important things is the affirmative action. Ours is a very hierarchical society. We have uh, people belonging to different categories. We have the Dalits, we have the tribal, now we have the third gender, LGBTQ, and so on and so forth. Therefore, when we think in terms of the social action, and social science research is also social action, we need to keep in mind that it finally aims at what DY Sondrosu called social transformation. Social transformation, how does it bring lot changes to the society or how does it bring social transformation? Therefore, we need to keep in mind that social science research primarily aims at social transformation. If you look at your own research, when you go to the people or when you ask people or when you investigate a problem, for all of you, this is the prime objective that it will somehow contribute towards the social transformation. Now, when we talk about social transformation, we need to keep in mind that this social transformation is centered on a lot of things. But we need to understand that the most important thing what we need to understand is the power. Now, it, when we talk about social transformation, we also think in terms of bringing about quality, qualitative transformation in a power equation. Probably all those things will be taken up when you'll be talking about research methodology and research techniques. I'm happy 
that a seminar being organized by the Department of Geography has also invited me, and the political scientist has invited me to be part of this, uh, you know, workshop. Uh, you know, uh, I'd like to inform you that I have also worked on one of the important dimensions in geography, which has been very comprehensively debated. That is space. I have worked on contested urban space, street vendors in Guwahati and Bangkok. That is a sponsored project. Now, when I was trying to look at the dimension of space or importance of space from the perspective of the requirements of the people who are selling commodities on the street, therefore I have called it contested urban space, I have looked into you know, what have been the important issues for them. A lot of issues are there, there have been a lot of contestations over urban space when you think in terms of the elite people, they think that the street or the pavement is a monopoly for them. And when people are selling commodities on the street, they are you know, creating a lot of hindrances for them. But if you look at a lot of interventions on the part of the social movements, as, on, as well as also on the part of the court or the judiciary, there have been a lot of debates on the rights of the street vendors that resulted in an enactment of an act in 2014, street vendors, you know, their livelihood security or the regulating street of the Vending Act 2014. That has given and ensured the rights for the street vendors. I was looking at what is happening in Guwahati city. We have around 30,000, 32, 35,000 street vendors who have been struggling here for their livelihood. Now, that has been, uh, my research has been driven by that the interest of the marginalized sections of the society. Therefore, I have looked into a lot of legislations which are happening, what actions have been taken up by the government, what institutions have been formed, and how the institutions have been functioning. I am just giving you an example of my own to bring to uh, your attention that social transformation has also been one of the requirements or one of the objectives on my part while thinking about social science research. I worked on uh, health right. I'm a political scientist, but my PhD was on right to health. Why have I taken uh, the right to health? There are personal reasons, there are collective reasons. My parents used to be very, you know, they used to have a lot of diseases from my childhood and I could see the hindrances on the part, on our part, when we were, uh, you know, we were in the schools or colleges, we were confronted with a lot of challenges that forced me to work on right to health. Therefore, uh, I'm just giving you the example. If you look at a lot of researches, your own research or researches done by a lot of institutions, you'll find, uh, you know, there'll be an objective of bringing qualitative change in a society. Therefore, in social science research, even if we talk of research, when we talk of research methodology or research techniques, we need to keep in mind that these methodology or techniques are not quantitative alone. We go for quantitative data, we go for field survey, we take a lot of interviews, but we need to keep in mind ultimately social science research comes up with an idea, comes up with an objective, comes up with a critique of the existing or the given social order. Therefore, it is very important. And when you talk about a, uh, you know, a perspective of critique of the given social order, we need to keep in mind that there are a lot of power structures that is creating a lot of hindrances towards social transformation. Look at caste. Caste has been one of the very important issues in social science research, particularly for the sociologists. One of the very important sociologists of 20th century of our time, Andre Vete, for example, was trying to understand the importance of caste. He, he was doing his PhD under one of the very eminent sociologists of India, M. N. Srinivas, and his thesis was on a village. How does a village operate? And his thesis was titled class, caste, caste, class and power. How caste and class, uh, you know, intersect with each other and creates its own power equations. And if you look at many, many researches which are happening, ultimately aims at these transformations or trying to find out what are the problems. Are they addressing the constitutional requirements or constitutional morality? Therefore, my idea is, and when I am doing my research, 
or my research scholars are uh, you know writing their dissertation i have always kept in mind that we need to have the objective social transformation and when we say social transformation as i have already pointed out giving reference to dy sondros when dy sondros was telling something interesting he is the he was a judge or he has been a judge in the supreme court and he is presently the chief justice of the country and he was asked remember our supreme court is the highest appellate court if there are some decisions on the part of the uh, you know uh, high high court and people are aggrieved about that they will directly go they will challenge it in the supreme court in that sense that is the appellate court but he was also mentioning that indian supreme court has also act, acted as a court of litigation because he was suggesting that when indian constitution was framed it was always kept in mind that these institutions have to be uh, have to have access for the common people now litigation when it comes to the question of litigation people are aggrieved on many things people have been arrested people have been put into the jail now supreme court door of the supreme court has also been kept open for challenging it therefore this is an idea that court or any other institution our higher educational institutions for uh, uh, for that matter any institutions have to be kept open so that it helps towards you know achieving justice or towards bringing in qualitative transformation of the society i think in this research workshop also in this workshop on research methodology and for that matter the techniques of research methodology all will always keep in mind this particular dimension of constitutional morality and as the core in social science research now as i was talking about the national education policy you could see in a very abstract or in a very preamble of it it has constantly been talking about it that we need to address the issue of equity issue of gender issue of freedom issue of justice i was listening to one of the important speeches delivered by prime minister narendra modi uh, i think on the day the election dates were declared he was speaking in uh, the uh, india today conclave uh, being held in new delhi then he was also asserting this point that the government the government any government successive governments so there are one of the important rules on their part to address the concerns of the downtrodden if we do not address the issues of the downtrodden we are not doing justice as a government or as parliament and he was talking about many many issues for example he was talking about startup issues he was talking about digital you know digitalization of the economy he was talking about using drone by the agricultural women and many many other issues but the vital point he was trying to point out and he was also talking about the street vendors <coughs> vital point he was talking about that the government is in power they are in power their prime responsibility is bring transformation if we cannot bring transformation to the, or bring quality to transformation for the cause of the poor people we are doing no service to the country as a whole now as social scientists we are also looking at these issues very critically i was pointing out the street vendors act of 2014 that's a very important act and that act came about because of the interventions of various courts including the supreme court now act is revolutionary in uh, in its spirit but in terms of its implementation nothing concrete has been done in many of the states for example i was looking at guwahati 2014 the act was uh, enacted the state government adopted it uh, you know framed the rules but when it has come uh, uh, come towards the implementation of it or materializing it nothing substantive has been done one of the important requirements are the street vendors act is to have the survey how many street vendors are there in the city that has not yet been completed another important thing is to uh, you know decide on or identify or in, uh, you know institute the vending zones for the street vendors that has also not happened now as a social scientist our responsibility is to look at all these dimensions you have an act in hand whether in conformity with that particular act you have also framed uh, the rules and regulations and you have established the required institutions and whether the practices under the provision of the act or provisions of the rules have been happening or not 
Therefore, uh, I'd like to urge upon the social scientists who are present here to look at these dimensions, look at the power equations, look at the uh, you know past practices very seriously, look at the legislations, look at the institute, whatever may be your discipline, your discipline may be geography, your di discipline may be economics, your discipline may be uh, sociology or women's studies or whatever. But it is important to look at that there is a common trade and that common trade is our objective of bringing about social transfor transformation or qualitative transformation in the society. I thank you all for the opportunity being given to me and I am very hopeful, although number of participants probably will not be big in numbers, but then the uh, debates or discussions which will happen here will be very, very intensive and you will be in a position to contribute to us in whatever way. will be, uh, you know, you will be in a position to contribute to us the social transformation in conformity with the constitutional morality that I have referred to. With these few words, I am, uh, again, I thank all of you, particularly the organizers, for the opportunity being given to me, and I uh, hope that your workshop, workshop will be a great success. Thank you very much.